Hello, ladies and gentlemen, today would usually be the week that I post about the struggle of people working in entry-level jobs, such as retail and food service, as is the norm for me. Today is going to be something a little different. There's going to be a lot of politics in this video, so if you don't want to watch this, you don't have to, but I want to take the time today to educate people on what drives socialists to be socialists. We've all heard the propaganda lines. Socialism is a good idea on paper, but terrible in practice. Or socialism killed more people than Hitler. Socialism did this. Socialism did that. Well, my dear viewer, what if I told you that there's a reason that people, especially within the Imperial Corps and Imperial Periphery, decide to place their faith in the future in this very system that you've heard so many negative things about? Well, today I'm here to answer the question, what radicalized you? And I must preface this by saying that I am a socialist. My personal story is too long for just one video. The reason it is so long is that it takes place over the course of two years. From 2021, when I first realized that capitalist propaganda projects the shortcomings of capitalism onto socialism, to today, as I live under my grandmother's roof because there are no jobs around here, and the jobs that are here don't pay dick. And yes, that is to say that I came to this conclusion all on my own without any woke brainwashing. These four videos are the best way I can sum it all up. Links will be in the description for each of those, unless I forget. Today, I travel to the subreddit r slash lightstage capitalism, a post titled What Radicalized You? The post includes a screenshot of a tweet reading, when I was 11, my mom would let our neighbor use water from our hose because his utilities were shut off. He was elderly and living off of social security. Apparently this is illegal and the cops came to shut off our water as well. It cost us $400 to turn it back on. This goes to show that you don't actually own your house as a homeowner. Because if you actually owned your own house, you would be able to use the utilities as you please. Even if the argument is you don't own the utilities, you still have paid for the privilege to use the utilities and can use them as you please. But alas, there are laws in place designed to punish the poor for being poor. You know what's fucked up, and I've had to learn this from living with a senior citizen myself, is that social security doesn't pay shit when you retire. I was stripped of my source of income after being duped by my employer, blood dry by my car insurance and phone bills, starved out when I applied for unemployment benefits, my family had rent assistance pulled out from under us, and we were forced out of our tenant in freezing rain, and all after we worked throughout the entire two years of the COVID-19 pandemic, keeping the economy on our backs and narrowly avoiding illness, all while being told we were essential workers. But I've learned that there are people who have wasted their entire adult lives working dead-end jobs like the person I'm living with now did, only to be paid $800 a month total between social security and food stamps. And as we see in this post, some elderly people are so fucking poor as a result that they have to ask their neighbors for permission to use their utilities because theirs was cut off. Only for the law to get involved and fuck over the person letting the elderly person use their utilities and hold it hostage. I can't help but imagine myself at 65, 70, 80 years old with the choice of either continuing to slave away at some dead end job or collect a meager social security check and spend the last few years of my life in misery while the elite of my generation enjoy the fruits of their exploitation of us. This is why I cannot allow this system to continue its wretched existence. I would rather not live at all than to live my entire life as a slave to an elite few. If it means I die on the battlefields of a failed uprising, then so be it. I will not have decades upon decades of my life wasted toiling away, only for there to be nothing for me at the end of it, except for a dilapidated house and an empty fridge. Ladies and gentlemen, let's continue into the depths of this Reddit post and see what else has radicalized working people against capitalism. When I was 18, I worked at a coffee shop. We had a junkie employee stealing cash and the police were involved. Stupidly, I agreed to a polygraph just to clear my name. They suspected me because I was nervous. I didn't steal any cash. Maybe the odd cookie or coffee. We all did. The kicker was, when I was parked in the popos, they surveyed my vehicle and slapped me with a $380 fine for not having an EGR or PCV valve on my Jeep. Decided I would never help the place again. What the fuck is an EGR? <laughs> Dude, this is... The way the police operate in our society disqualifies them, in my eyes, from being recognized as a legitimate force for law enforcement. As the person below says, they are basically just a state-sanctioned gang. Always have been. Whoever isn't convinced of this just by the fact that the police have quotas to fulfill for how many people they fine, ticket, and arrest, they're fucking hopeless. Maybe they'll finally open their eyes when they're at the end of a taser. I was once ticketed because my car, which was and still is defunct, was parked on the side of the road, and I guess the police didn't 
didn't like the fact that my car was constantly parked on the side of the road. So of course, what do they do? They threatened to extort me for 35 bucks if I didn't move the vehicle. We were able to jumpstart the damn thing and move it, but seriously, I didn't know parking on the side of the fucking road in a residential area was a fucking traffic violation. Anyone with their head screwed on right should have the life goal of subduing the police state and pulling them off their fucking high horse. My story involves the government deciding whether or not they would allow themselves to be fucking sued. My dad was an air traffic controller. It used to be a government job at the FAA, but George W. Bush decided to privatize the industry. During the process, my dad, along with like 1,700 of his co-workers, were told, you know those retirement accounts you guys work for and that you put your own money into? Yeah, we're taking it and you have to start over from zero. The company Lockheed Martin took ownership of the retirement accounts and decided to keep them since my dad and his co-workers weren't old enough to retire. There was a whole class action lawsuit. Here's a link to info on the class action lawsuit. From what my dad told me, they had to first decide if the government could even be sued. I was like five years old when this started, so I'm fuzzy on the details. It's an age discrimination lawsuit that started in 2005 and ended like a year and a half ago. My dad personally lost a $1.3 million retirement account, the $81,000 he put into the account. He was also blacklisted from other government jobs, so he couldn't change to a different job, especially with ATC training being super specific. And after the lawsuit, he was paid three cents for every dollar out of the $1.3 million he deserved. Here's another link to the lawsuit. Even now, after almost 20 years, an entire lawsuit, the job being sold to another company, Lados, I, I, I'm guessing that's how that's pronounced, and my dad finally getting to retire by the skin of his fucking teeth. They are coming back and still fucking around with him over a few grand in health insurance and monthly payments. They are a company worth billions of fucking dollars and they can't find something better to do than try and scrounge up a few grand from someone they have railed for decades. Fuck the entirety of the system here in the US. There is not a single redeeming quality about how this country operates. Jesus, dude. My head would explode. My takeaway is that this person's father was scammed out of his retirement. He not only had his retirement account stolen, stolen by Lockheed Martin and was then blacklisted from working in other government jobs, but he is still 20 years later having Laos, Lidos, whatever the fuck. They're trying to rob him of his fruits of labor. See what I mean? Nah, dude. I would be up in arms over that shit. That's a $1.3 million fucking retirement account. There are people that don't have shit that can't save up for retirement because they live paycheck to paycheck. I think you would understand if those that can want to fucking keep what they have rightfully earned. I would have staged a rebellion then and there. Lockheed Martin would not exist right now if I had any part of that. The final story for today reads, When I was young, we almost lost our house and I cried to sleep hoping I could get hit by a metro bus. I didn't want to be a burden and I wanted to leave some money for my family. That shit isn't normal. And I know there are many children out there who feel like a burden and can't enjoy their youth like they deserve to. Poverty kills. This one hits me right in the feels. It was about a year ago that I began Began having these same thoughts of maybe I would be of better help to my family if I ceased to exist and that maybe this job search is in vain which it is kind of. These thoughts now pervade my daily life. And maybe that's what the elite wants, but between bringing an end to myself and bringing an end to this atrocious system, I'd say that I want to bring an end to this system more. Maybe then I wouldn't want to bring an end to myself as much. What makes me feel worse though, is that children are coming to this same state of mind. From day one, we are indoctrinated into the cult of capital. We are told throughout our lives that this is freedom. This is the American dream. Is it though? What we're living in right now is the American nightmare. And no, that's not a reference to Cody Rhodes. This is a legitimate proclamation. How do you justify this shit? How do you justify someone being born into a lower class family with housing insecurity, crying themselves to sleep each night, believing that their family would be better off without them, and then growing up to work dead end jobs for 40 to 50 years, only to not have anything to show for it? Bootlickers sit there and tell you that hard work rewards, and then turn around and say that the minimum wage shouldn't be increased because people who work for minimum wage are contributing minimum effort in their jobs. Well, how the fuck do you no. Do you go into places that pay that and see that the workers do nothing but dick around? And even if they are, did it ever occur to you that the reason they contribute minimum effort is because they're being paid minimum? Do you not think that they would work harder if they were being paid more than minimum? But then the argument changes to, well, these people are in this situation for a reason. If you don't like where you're at, go back to school and stop doing drugs. Really? Do you stand there watching over these people as they do drugs? And do you seriously think that people wouldn't go to college if it wasn't so damn expensive? Do you really think these people wouldn't go to trade school if they had the opportunity? Do you really think it is that easy for entry level workers to just find a better job? Do me a favor, okay? Stop letting the government think for you. Stop letting politicians think for you. And stop letting corporations think for you.
Just because these people are of a higher social status does not mean they can do no harm. They absolutely can do harm, they do harm all the time. Stop blaming the unfortunate for being unfortunate, because we have less control over our situation than you think. Stop blaming immigrants for job insecurity, and stop blaming welfare recipients for higher taxes. If welfare recipients were being paid a fair wage and could find a job, they wouldn't need to go on welfare to begin with. And job insecurity has nothing to do with immigrants. The first and foremost thing we should be focused on in regard to that is at will employment laws. As long as those exist, your boss could fire you for any petty reason he could pull out of his ass. Your boss wants to extract as much labor from you as possible and reward you as little as possible. Remember that and let it become self-evident as things continue down this path. And consider that your lesson in Marxist theory. If you ever get around to it, I highly recommend reading up on Marxist capital, as well as his other work. Upon actually looking into his literature, you'll probably think twice before stating that Marx's biggest contribution to the world was in 1883 when he died. If reading or listening to an audiobook is too boring for you, there are plenty of channels here on YouTube that make leftist educational content that is engaging and interesting to watch. Particularly, I recommend Second Thought and Hakim, as well as the Deprogram podcast, which is aimed at disillusioning people with bits of humor sprinkled in, such as the method by which I crawled out of the pits of liberalism. And with that, I will sign off on this video. If you enjoyed hearing what I had to say, please consider clicking thumbs up. Also consider spreading the word by sharing this video with your friends. Leave a comment, engage in discourse, and feel free to give your thoughts on what you've heard, and be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, as there will be more. And click the bell to get notified when I upload. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back next week with another video. Bye guys.